on the divine feminine journey, if you've met your twin flame and they have activated you, it's important to know that ultimately both you and your twin are runners. Both of you are running from the truth of who you truly are at your core. Both of you are running from the love that you are. And so if you're listening to this, you're likely a divine feminine, whether you're in a male body or a female body. So I'm going to speak to this primarily. I might shine a light on the divine masculine as well, and maybe this will resonate with you. The divine feminine on this journey is operating from her feminine shadow, which is rooted in a sense of powerlessness, a sense of inadequacy, not being good enough, which is ultimately the core wound of unworthiness. And she has spent her life seeking validation and externalized approval out in the, in the world of form, out in the 3D. And this has been going on likely your entire life. Your, your twin flame has just kind of exacerbated this and really activated this journey. But if you reflect back on situations and circumstances throughout your life, whether it be in relationship or career or, you know, and those relationships can be platonic or romantic, you know, relationships you have with employers, places that you um, have been self-abandoning will come to the surface on this journey. And ultimately, the self-abandonment is, again, rooted in the feminine shadow that is underpinned by this core wound of unworthiness. And so seeking validation outside of yourself in the form of relationship, in the form of material success, in the form of, you know, doing more in order to get some kind of badge of honor, whether that be in, in your workplace or, or in your personal life. This can look like people-pleasing. This can look like codependency. This can look like losing yourself in a connection um, because you're kind of turning into a chameleon and being what everybody else needs you to be in order to get that approval. Covertly, the feminine shadow is running the show, and it's a subtle form of manipulation. Now, it's not intentional and it's not malicious, but it's a subtle form of manipulation, people-pleasing, codependency, overgiving, um, not speaking your truth, not, not um, you know, being a yes woman, saying yes when you really mean no and things like that. What that's ultimately saying unconsciously is, I need you to love me. I need you to accept me or I need you to give me the approval I'm looking for, whether that be, again, in any kind of relationship or dynamic, personally or professionally. And so I'm going to morph into something other than who I truly am, what's authentically in alignment for me. And I'm going to be whatever you need me to be in order to be good enough in order to be lovable, in order to be accepted, in order to be validated, in order to be worthy. And so you're wearing a false mask, right? And this is all happening unconsciously, but on this journey, this begins to rise to your awareness and you see where this has been playing out in your life. And your twin flame comes in and, and really activates these core wounds of feeling abandoned, not good enough, unworthy, not lovable, inadequate, right? Part of this journey, remember the feminine shadow is rooted in a sense of powerlessness, right? Part of this journey is reclaiming your feminine power and calling this back to you, reclaiming your divine sovereignty. No longer looking outside of yourself for someone to save you. 
especially your twin flame. Your twin flame won't save you. Your twin flame won't be able to come back and mirror back to you what you need in order to feel whole or complete or lovable or accepted or good enough or validated or worthy. They are you. They are another incarnation of the same soul, right? So they are you. They're only going to reflect back to you you your true you and what and and your shadows and the love that you are simultaneously right but they came in to activate that so you could look at that they're going to mirror that back to you so that you can can break those distorted cycles that are rooted in not fully fully knowing in your core who you truly are and fully embodying your divinity this journey will demand of you authenticity you being in alignment with your truth not only your personal truths on the relative level but also your absolute truth of who you truly are as a divinely worthy being just for existing not because you did something or said something to earn it or achieve it, not because of the money in the bank, not because of the way you look, not because of the car you drive, not because of the circles you run with, not because of you know your image or how much of an impact you're making or any of these other things. Nothing outside of you can validate you on this journey. This is a journey of coming home to who you truly are And remembering your divine worthiness and allowing this remembrance, which kind of unfolds in 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 cycles, but this remembrance begins to permeate your being, your physical expression, right? This remembrance of who you truly are. This coming home to your true self and no longer seeking outside of yourself for validation. This begins to shift all areas of your life. It permeates your human mind-body vehicle. And it demands authenticity. It demands truth. Again, your personal truths in the 3D world and also your absolute truth of who you truly are. The more you run from this, the more you are inauthentic, the more you dishonor yourself, the more you betray your own heart, the more you don't speak your truth, the more you silence your your voice, the more you allow misalignment in your life, in any area, you know, career, relationships, family dynamics, any place that you are compromising your integrity will be shown to you. And this is essentially you running from who you truly are. Because this is an awakening journey. This is an ascension journey. But even as you begin to realize your divine nature and live from that place and you realize you no longer identify with the separate sense of self, there's a purification process that continues after that as each fragmented part of your human conditioning and aspects of yourself come into alignment with unity consciousness, right? So any place that you're operating from fear or lack or scarcity or disempowerment will all bubble up to the surface for, for uh, your conscious awareness to be able to alchemize this you become the great alchemist on on this journey. So your twin flame reflects back to you not only the love that you are at your core, but 
after the initial phase of meeting will trigger all of your core wounding. And this happens because of the love of the soul and the journey that you're on and your intentions for this incarnation in this lifetime. There is no stone being left unturned on this journey if you fully embrace this journey for what it is. If you stay stuck looping in the journey as if it's just about a rom- some kind of romantic connection or something like that, and it's just about another quote-unquote person, and that your entire focus is on whether or not there's a union with them or not, or a reunion or whatever, and you're treating it like that. You stay looping in this suffering because you're completely missing the higher purpose of this whole activation with your twin flame to begin with, which is to come home to yourself and to break all of these cycles. The fact that you have heightened state of obsessive thinking and addictive energy at the very beginning of this journey should be your first telltale sign that this is not uh, so not a soulmate connection it's not normal and then you go through various ascension symptoms you know that's different for everyone whether that be a kundalini awakening or opening to your intuitive gifts and things like that And things begin to be made aware to you. But you are a conscious co-creator. And there's what appears to be a choice on whether or not you're going to go down the same rabbit hole over and over and over and over again. And in truth, you'll go down the rabbit holes of suffering until you don't. And they're all serving you. Suffering on this journey and facing your pain on this journey is also part of the awakening process. And it's not across the board when you talk about spiritual awakenings. It's not like that for everybody that ever, you know, reaches, you know, a self-realized state or an enlightened state or, or wakes up or whatever you want to call it. But it is on this journey for for as far as I can tell. And I'd love to hear about your experience in the comments. Not everyone chose the twin flame catalyst in this lifetime. Some people wake up spontaneously. Some people wake up out of the blue and they were never even on a spiritual path. Some people realize their true nature and divinity within after a near-death experience or something traumatic happening or someone passing away or some kind of health crisis. And so there's many different catalysts and it's different for everyone. In fact, the awakening journey is unique to you and it will be 100% unique to you. But within that, there are, um, there are things that are very similar. And one thing that's similar, if you've met your twin flame, is that you have chosen in this lifetime to to really rip the band-aid off of these core wounds that have been with you not only in this lifetime, but, you know, most likely previous lifetimes as well. And when I say previous, they're all simultaneous, ultimately happening now. They're not like linear in time but there's so much culminating in this lifetime for so many souls on this journey that they have accumulated with them um, as a result of their 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 karma that they've carried through lifetimes and so everybody's journey is going to look unique some uh Yeah, so we'll just leave it with that. Everybody's journey is going to look very unique. Now, when I say that both twin flames are runners, right? Because on this journey, you're told one's a runner and one's a chaser and the divine feminine's a chaser. And and to a degree, that's true because you're chasing whether you're chasing physically or energetically. And what that really means is your awareness, your consciousness 
is going out, going out. And you're like seeking externally outside of yourself, looking for the love. And here's the kicker. Here's the cosmic joke. You're looking for the love outside of yourself when you are the love. And so a, your mirror soul is only going to be able to reflect that back to you and run because that's what you're doing with yourself. Remember, you're both the same soul. So if you're running from your essence, then they're running from you. Now, I normally don't speak on the divine masculine in these channeled messages, but I'm being guided to right now. The divine masculine also appears to be a runner on this journey, but he's more running um, externally, right? You're running from yourself more inwardly, right? The divine feminine essence is, a, is subtle realms, right? The masculine deals with the more externalized realm. So he is running from his true nature as well. And he's running from not only the love that he is, that has been reflected back through your mirroring, which makes him feel vulnerable, which makes him feel, you know, um, yeah, super vulnerable, but he's also running from all of his fragmented aspects of self and his own shadow, you know, and this can look like, you know, staying in careers that are not in alignment, being inauthentic to his truth, um, not being able to make decisions that are rooted in what he knows to be in alignment with him. This can look like going into relationships that are out of alignment, career choices that are out of alignment, wearing a false mask ultimately. Both twins are wearing false masks. Both twins are running from their true nature. Both twins are running from their shadows, which will also bubble up and be activated on this journey. If both twins are here to heal at a deep core level and to break these patterns in this lifetime, there will be intense triggering on this journey and there will be um, both shadows activated, the masculine shadow and the feminine shadow. And re remember again, this is not gender specific. So divine masculine can be in a female body and divine feminine can be in a male body, you know, and things like that. So I think that goes without saying, if you're listening to this, you've likely been on this journey long enough to, to realize that this is not gender specific, but I just wanted to state that anyway for those that are newer. And so everything gets triggered on this journey and the divine masculine runs from what his heart knows. And there can be a lot of egoic tendencies that bubble up that, you know, just like for the feminine that keep um, him chasing externally, you know, whether that be through needing to look a certain way, dress a certain way, have, you know, be attached to the amount of money that he's making or be in a career that looks good on paper but is not really in alignment with what he wants to be doing or he's in a relationship that's not, you know, fully allowing him to be vulnerable or open or honest or authentic or seen and things like that. So both twins are running from their authenticity. They're running from their truth. They're running from the love that they are. And they're running from their own shadows. And so all of this gets triggered on the journey. And so what does this have to do with ascension? Well, your divine nature, the essence of you, your beingness, who you truly are, not the small separate self, who you truly are, is not wounded, does not know lack. So where are you 
buying into the illusion? Where are you buying in to separation consciousness that is rooted in fear and powerlessness? Because the feminine shadow is at play when it's operating from fear-based consciousness. And this is the journey to transcend fear-based egoic consciousness and move into heart-centered unity consciousness. You might find it interesting that some of the phases of the twin flame journey are called separation and union. But it's not referring to the other person. And that may happen on the 3D world, in the 3D world of form. But it won't be what you think it will be. And it won't be the romantic narrative that you're consuming and addicted to. If this resonated with you, I would love to hear from you. Drop me a comment. If you want support on this journey, my Embody the Empress monthly immersion is there for you. We dive deep into fully healing the feminine heart, really integrating the feminine shadow, integrating the sacred masculine essence within you, really claiming your feminine power and reclaiming your divine sovereignty so you can fully actualize your highest timeline and divine potential in this lifetime. So if that resonates with you, you'll find a link wherever you're listening to this. It's a beautiful program and I would love to have you if you feel called. Until next time, I hope this finds you well. Namaste.